Hey guys, Kyle here. So, just before the show starts, I wanted to mention our Patreon. You can pay us $1 a month as a thank you, as a tip. You can pay $2 a month to get access to one of our bonus content shows, uh, episodes two days early, and a secret Discord chat where all of our Patreon donors get to go and hang out and talk with us directly. Then there's a $5 tier that you can donate to to get access to a whole bunch more content. Uh, we have multiple bonus episodes on there. So please check it out, patreon.com slash it gets weird. Uh, we don't advertise, we don't make money. So check it out and throw some money if you think that would be cool. Thanks. Welcome to It Gets Weird, our comedy show where we explore the unbelievable, the un... <laughs> <laughs> I really jinxed you. This is what happens when we do a different type of episode and we don't put it on the top of our notes. <laughs> Welcome to It Gets Weird, our comedy show where we explore the unusual, the unbelievable, and the unexplained to try to make your world a little weirder. I'm Niall. <laughs> I'm Kyle. I'm Kyle, and I thought I turned the sound off this thing. Fuck. <laughs> I, we're having a real we're look <laughs> look this country's in turmoil and therefore this episode is in turmoil oh my god my inner my my mind is in turmoil um <laughs> no this is look here's the thing this is us being back in the same room oh. uh we, we've been kind of switching back and forth due to some life stuff uh and and we finally get to to, to hang out in the same room again oh. uh and i think that 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 brings an energy that you, that at least for this moment can be described as chaotic. Uh, I should just go home. I fucked it all up. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's good. I, 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 this is, I, this I is should the go home and go to bed. Yeah. I mean, that's what I did yesterday. I, I was fucking out of it. Um, uh, so this week. Yes. This is a special episode. This is the first episode of Fuck Your Documentary, colon, back in time, hyphen, uh, historical archives. <laughs> <laughs> I caught you off guard there. Yeah, that's the series title that Dial and I we decided yeah, on. Yeah, that's what we decided like... on. Today we actually watched Marvel's <laughs> The Eternals. Um, <laughs> uh, no, yeah. uh, we we watched a documentary from 1970 that's an adaptation <laughs> of uh, Chariots of the Gods. Yeah, uh, <laughs> with starring Kingo. Uh, yeah. No, yeah, and we Sprite. <laughs> yeah, we. I watched... prefer Coke myself, but that's okay. <laughs> I, you could say anything to me right now and it, it, we get some sort of reaction. Uh, I, um, yeah, we watched Chariots of the Gods, a 1970 documentary based on the book by Eric Von Daniken, which you did the Eric Von Daniken episode, did. didn't you? Yeah. Yes. And I, so I recognized quite a few things in this documentary. Uh, now I didn't, Kyle, I had I had a real journey while watching this documentary. Yeah, this thing is ninety four minutes long, directed by Howard Reinel, I think. Um, nineteen seventy documentary, so it's like from an age before documentaries just became a series of talking heads. Yeah. So this was like this. I I okay when I picked this documentary, I was like, oh, a documentary from nineteen seventy about chariots of the gods. This will be an interesting like cultural touchstone. I didn't expect it to be a glorified travel documentary. Yeah. So, okay. So we are of this. We have not discussed our thoughts on this yet at all together. We always say that we really don't confer with each other on our opinions after we watch something and then, and then we discuss it. So I'm hearing for the first time that we have the same thoughts on this particular documentary. I, I was literally, I throughout here, I made marks of like timestamps when I had just like, moments where i almost turned the documentary off like it, it <laughs> this okay so i i think that this documentary could be interesting if you cut it in like a third yeah. like it is this is like a 30 minute documentary after anybody with any editing skill gets a hold of it <laughs> oh my god so let, let's set this up real quick because like it starts out and you're like okay this is this is setting up look I don't believe in ancient aliens, but I think it's an interesting topic that for all of its fucked upness and it's like racist undertones and yeah, all of those things that are, that make it entirely unfeasible to me as an actual belief system. 
I think it's a weird, fun worldview to look at when you look at it, at least knowing the criticalness of it on the other side of it. Yeah. But if I watched this documentary as my first input of the ancient aliens hypothesis, <laughs> I would have fallen asleep. Yeah, you'd been like, you know, fuck this. Yeah, it's, it is so... It, it starts out like uh, the way the documentary should, where it's just like introducing some basic themes. It starts off um, doing uh, like at, at, at like a, a space telescope that they're like, oh, this is like a really wild observatory. Yeah. You can see way out into the depths of space and the vastness of the unknown. And hmm, isn't it weird that we think there's n like some people think there's no life out there. There's probably life in all of these billions and billions of stars and planets. Yeah, it, all the normal documentary stuff you would expect at the start, like showing off the telescope, asking the questions, citing Werner von Braun. Yeah. Uh, all <laughs> it does only seem to cite <laughs> German and Russian scientists. It, yes, very specifically. Now, that is that is like the... the now, we, we have talked about the idea of ancient aliens as a anti-Christian... Uh, pro-atheist propaganda system coming out of Russia, which is a very interesting framework to view this documentary from. Um, more interesting than the documentary itself, but it, it does, it's really funny that they're just like, yeah, noted, you know, noted rocket scientist Werner von Braun. Yeah. It, it's, no context. It's, um, it is really weird to hear them say that. And I was like waiting for them to say something about, uh, imported via operation paperclip the, <laughs> when we took the nazis over did but we know about operation paperclip in 1970 probably not i, I don't gonna know say. but probably not so it's um yeah it's it, it's it's very interesting too especially after the context of i don't remember who the subject was but the guy who essentially helped propagandize ancient yeah. aliens to north america as that soviet like anti-christian mm -hmm. thing that you mentioned we did an episode on Nile. Nile did i that don't episode. remember it's it's a very russian name and i i it did not stick in my brain but but you can go find the episode if this was an attempt at that propaganda i mean it's 1970 what what are you really doing that's more exciting than watching this documentary this this does have a bit of a now I think an interesting note to that is the yeah. soundtrack of this documentary. It's a pretty cool soundtrack. Pretty good soundtrack, except when you go to Egypt, when it becomes very fucking <laughs> like, like if if you were hit, if if there was an Egypt key on a Casio keyboard, that is what would be playing yeah. throughout the entirety <laughs> yeah. of our time in Egypt. Yeah. Uh, and every time else, it's just this like kind of like uh, like lounge jazz kind of like uh, new new it's, jazz seventies yeah, kind of aesthetic. Kind of fun. It's 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 pretty pretty hip. It's pretty I, good. I, I enjoyed the music. The thing. So here's the thing. And and you are it's so. Uh, you are you are so accurate in saying that it is a glorified travel do uh, uh, documentary. And the thing about it is I found myself, instead of thinking even for a fucking moment about the ancient aliens, yeah. like, thrust of this idea, yeah. I was just thinking to myself, wow, that is a cool place they're at. That yeah. is, like, a cool and interesting place they're at, and I wonder about the, hist the, like, real history of that. I think this documentary needed to have real sources of information about the locations that they visited, and people that they could talk to who could talk about those locations. I imagine none of those people would want to talk about aliens giving birth to human civilization. Yeah. But it, that's what it needed. Okay. Because after the first, just to like set the stage, I don't know how many people have watched this thing that we're talking you can about. You watch it on Amazon is, Prime, by the way. It is currently available on Amazon Prime. Go go check it out if you'd like to. Probably turn it on in the, on, in the background while you're doing something yes. else. Yes. Because... Otherwise, Absolutely. you will have the experience I did where I was literally like, I, I'm not going to lie, spend some time on Twitter. Try not yep. to do that during other yep. other things that we do. But this thing well, was so dry. But here, Yeah, here's the thing about this documentary where like if you know the ancient aliens theory stuff, you're like and you're like you're probably like familiar with the ancient aliens TV show where they just are able to like bang out multiple seasons, 18 seasons talking this point, about this bullshit. Instead of so like you'd think that there would be an, a sufficient entertainment value to like pull out of the idea, uh, even if like I think the original Chariots of the Gods book is like only a couple like over a hundred pages long. It's not a lot of content, but like it's still like you'd think they'd be able to pull something out of it. Um, but you know, I straight up I'm the exact same way where like I pay 
I, I try to keep attending, even if it's something I'm not enjoying. Mm-hmm. For this show, I, I, I will watch, I will glue my eyes to it. Yep. This one, I found myself making coffee and eating Girl Scout cookies. Um, yeah. Because I just couldn't, eventually you realized the pattern of, of what was going to happen. It was going to be, th- this documentary is an hour and a half of go to a place, say, this is what this place is. Here's some like, Things from that place that are like, how did humans make this? Yeah, it's that was literally all it is. Here is a place. This place has really big stone things. Yeah. Ancient civilizations were too stupid to do this. Which wash, rinse, repeat for an hour and a half. People have probably seen the meme on Twitter and Tumblr or whatever, where it's like, just because I forget what it was. It's like, just because white people couldn't do it doesn't mean everyone else can't. everyone else in these ancient civilizations can't um which is like that's the, the just like the entirety of like uh, the 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 easter island uh heads and and mm-hmm. and stuff like that so um that meme is this entire documentary the entire thing and i i didn't i maybe i should have looked into this i have a feeling some of the things that they reference in this too are things that either were like better explained in the last it's been 50 fucking years since yeah. this documentary. I, I imagine there are some things that were better explained. Like, I think one of the things that I've seen online is how they would tie these ropes to the top of the 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 Easter Island heads, mm-hmm. and they would, like, shift them, which would then walk them around, even though they weigh, like, a fucking ton. Yeah. Using these ropes and multiple people, like, maneuvering them with the ropes, they could, like, leverage the the the, the giant stone to, like, make it sort of walk around. Yeah, it's 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 like it's simple machine stuff. Like it, it I the I'm not an I'm not an architect. I'm not a, a, a an a, an engineer. I yeah. I don't know the specifics of these things. But the 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 core basis of about 80% of this documentary is there is this really big stone thing at this place. We don't think they could have done it therefore aliens yeah and and that which to be fair we've been doing that for the last 50 years with the ancient alien stuff that is that is the primary that is the core of all of that um and you know they also they talk about like uh like paintings that depict weird things but here's here's, these these are where we i get a little more like it's at least interesting it's cool to look at for sure here's the thing about those though yeah Here's the thing about those you will find in the ancient aliens theory stuff where they will point out like weird, like, uh, Oh, what's the like 16th century, uh, uh, battle in the sky or the War battle in the, sky. in the sky where there's all this weird stuff. And there's like a story to go along with that one. That one's its own unique case. And they don't talk about that one here surprisingly, no. but like they talk about stuff similar to that where like there's two guys in like a 14th century, like church painting, and like they look like they're riding around in like stars Mm -hmm. and they're like well what could this be other than ufos and here's the thing about basically all of the theories that hinge on that idea it turns out you can draw basically whatever you want yeah like like (laughs) yeah i mean yeah you can it's like you you look at like like we've had the idea of like people and beings coming from the heavens for so long now in our mythology in our religions and and honestly this is this is the it, the the ancient aliens theory side of that is to say well the only reason we could manifest such concepts is by experiencing them yeah. which is ridiculous yep there is there is imagination beyond mere experience so humans have been able to like be imaginative for so fucking long now yeah. that it really just makes that idea look fucking stupid to me. <laughs> it, I literally, I had, I had a similar revelation in watching this when we got to, well, I think when we went back to South America for about the third or fourth time, uh, that it's just like, it's, it's wild how all these ancient cultures have these massive monolithic structures that they just couldn't have built. Fucking newsflash, turn that shit around, baby. All these different places were able to build these things. Maybe that means it's easier than you think. Right. <laughs> like, no, and that's, yeah, and I, you know. I know this isn't, this isn't new for people who are like, are, 
who like pe- people who listen to this podcast are aware of ancient aliens things i understand so some of this is going to be very basic but this documentary because it came out in 1970 is a historical artifact of a time when we didn't have 18 seasons of ancient aliens to watch on tv <laughs> so we have to treat yeah. it as such and be frustrated with it as such yeah so yeah, I it literally is. It, it's literally like you're proving against yourself by showing how many different cultures were able to do these things. Yes, it really is. It's like so it's like worldwide people are able to pull off these amazing feats. But that, that like that translating to it, it had to be aliens because human beings, I guess, are incapable some- of like in, like amazing feats of like strength and engineering and and it's just it's yeah. crazy one of the you know one of the other sorry i, I don't mean to like no, cut good. you off but like the the one thing i also wanted to mention sort of in that vein when they spend some time in egypt and man let me tell you i i, I know i said it already but man i was just getting a thrill out of this like old footage of cool places yes but I, we'll talk about that in a second when they were in egypt there's a part where they're talking about the construction of the pyramids at Giza. Mm-hmm. And yes, those are f- fucking cool. And, and nope as hell. feats of crazy. And, but then they start talking about how it would have to take multiple lifetimes to construct, mm-hmm. which if that's, and, and so they're like, yeah, it's like, they're like, they're like run, they're like running math I, about like how difficult this would be and how, how long it would take which one, I don't know how accurate that is. I'm sure that there's... It, that's not. We, I was going to say, I don't think that's very accurate. But if it did take multiple lifetimes, why wouldn't they do multiple lifetimes of humans working on this? Why is the why do you default to aliens? It's like, they're just like, this is impossible for humans to do. We would have multiple lifetimes worth of people working on this particular project. And it's like, well, okay... Then you have like the base of the thing, and it then the in the next generation like builds the next layer up. Like I I don't news flash. Even the Hoover Dam has a death toll. Right. Like any massive project in human history has usually until a certain point in time resulted in mass death in the workforce that created it. That is part of the cost of these megal- <laughs> megalithic structures. The fucking pyramids are a death trap. For those that made them. Yeah. Either, yeah. Neither here nor... But the thing... That, okay. I had like two thoughts while you are talking. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. The first of which, when they started talking about math, was one of the funniest things about it. Because <laughs> they, they started talking about how... And if you take the size of the... If you take the, the height of the pyramids and multiply it by a billion, it's kind of approximately the distance from here to the sun. That's not a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking... What? <laughs> Fucking, what? There, there is that, and there is the whole thing about how you multiply to get pi, yeah, or something. Which I'm pretty sure is just basic math. I was gonna but say, yeah, it's, it's just it's, math. It's also one of those things. I think I've, I think I've done because uh, I, I spent a long time. For those that listen to the bonus episodes, they know I spent a long time reading uh, a book by Richard Basiago and uh, his <laughs> his. Uh, buddy I the big cheese boss the, yeah yeah about um about mars and the moon and pyramids on mars and shit like that and and there's a lot of like geometry and calculations of angles and stuff in there because <laughs> he tries to to do a like a calculus proof to prove that mars has humanoids um and he uses a lot of stuff about the great pyramids and various like pyramid structures on earth because they're tetrahedral geometry and he gets off on that shit He gets so hard talking about the pyramids. And so like, I think I've heard a lot of these arguments that they're talking about and it's, and so many of them, the thing that there's an asterisk on all of them. And it's like, if you round very specifically, if you like take a lot of stuff and basically like sand off the edges to make it fit. Yes. It will give you the thing you're talking about. But most, in most cases, it's like if you actually do the math, it doesn't really. It just gets kind of close, and they say it's close enough because they think that, like, the sands of time and, like, tectonic shift are enough to account for the change or whatever. And that's yeah. that's that's a, that's fine. Whatever the fuck. But don't d- – <laughs> it's so fucking wild when I heard – the thing that made me laugh the hardest in this documentary might have been the point where they were like, if you multiply the height of the pyramids – by a billion, <laughs> it's kind of like it's a little. It's close to how long it takes to get to the sun, and it's like, what the fuck are you saying? That mu- yeah, it's it's so funny. Like it, that that is like such a fucking irrelevant 
thing for one. But like with the pie thing, the thing that I think people will stumble into with this stuff um, is, is like there is something far more interesting here, which is that how, how mathematics is, is, is just like, linked to like the nature of reality yeah and that's far more interesting yeah like and, the and golden that, ratio and stuff and that like shit's, how yeah it's it's above my head but i recognize it but i think that there are people out there who have a different mindset who like can't make sense of the world but they see these these constants and these these like laws of nature and they have to like make sense of it and 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 their way of making sense of it is doing pyramid calculations. Up, well, like, e well, you either have to go to aliens who guide us through their advanced mm -hmm. everything, or you go to simulation theory and how like right. the fractal nature of nature, uh, the fractalness of nature is part of it being a computer program that is algorithmic, and therefore that's how the fractals exist. And like, look, those are two different offshoots. Both of them are are a, a sense of cope. I get it. It's fine. Everyone copes with reality in their own way, shape, and form with, with their own belief systems. Um, just, just like, uh, realize that's what it is. Um, yeah. But speaking of, 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 of cope and comfort. Yeah. A thing that I kept coming back to about this documentary and that, that like I occasionally just had to like really vibe on to make it through mm -hmm. is, the fact that this is almost certainly just a fucking VHS rip that's up on Amazon Prime. Right. This is like a grainy square, like four, three boxed, yep. like with like scan lines occasionally and, and, and straight like up just glitches like glitches and, and yeah. And, and like wear and tear on the VHS tape. Yeah. It's there is a certain aesthetic to it that rules. And yeah. like you could totally just put on a vaporwave like background music and mute the TV and just leave this on in the background. Yeah, it's probably a pretty chill it's hang. It's gonna be it's get that like what's the Macross Plus artist yeah. and take whatever album that was that like start lean like really kicked off the vaporwave movement, play it at the like same Macintosh time as watching Plus this. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Macintosh Plus, sorry, Macross Plus is an anime. I yeah, think. you're you're, you're um, look, you're <laughs> we I'm, get it. You I'm, like anime. I'm weeb brained, I'm sorry. But yeah, take that album, play it at the same time as this. It's gonna be kind of like Dark Side of the Moon plus Wizard of Oz territory. Yeah. So yeah, definitely try that sometime and uh, get back to us and let us know uh, how well yeah. that pairs. Because it, it, it is aesthetically, it is that exactly like you and said. And it's literally just footage of like cool ancient structures from taken in the 1970s. Like it's if you don't have to pay attention to this for a podcast, it's probably somewhat enjoyable. Yeah. But like I, I was sitting there and I had like a whiskey and I was watching this and I just kept getting so fucking frustrated and depressed. Like when, when I, when we got to a certain point where I was like, we're just kind of doing the same the thing same over and over thing. Yeah. And I looked down and it was 26 minutes into a 94 <laughs> minute documentary. You're like, Oh fuck. I, I laid down. I laid yeah. down on the couch. It, yeah. it was, that, that was a part of it. You no, know, it, the, the documentary, the thing is it's, it's kind of like the sun. You can't look directly at it. Yeah. You uh you have to turn away occasionally. I did enjoy like the beginning where I was talking about like ancient texts and you know people coming down in a cloud of smoke and like yeah. uh trying to like doing the whole thing about like if you take the the guy that the ancient not ancient but like this explorer who took the Iliad and the Odyssey literally, literally and yeah. found where ancient Troy was. Mm -hmm. That's that shit's cool. Like that stuff. That is the stuff that like is the gateway to ancient alien theory. That is the stuff because of. That's exactly why it's at the beginning of this documentary because that stuff seems so dope and it's like, oh, if we take these texts that people take as metaphorical and we take them incredibly literally, we can find the actual parts yeah, of the world. You become a frontiersman. Yeah. You you are a new explorer in an age where exploration like what they're talking about and like fant like romanticizing mm -hmm. just doesn't really exist. Yeah. quite the same way uh and and especially i mean especially nowadays so like if you can be your this this intrepid explorer of of the cosmos by exploring ancient aliens theory then you know that's what you're gonna do because it's more fun yeah what's funny is the mm -hmm. same kind of concept was used for a um christian series called finding noah or finding the ark or, or something like that that I, I had to watch. Um, I, I had to watch it for youth group. Uh, sorry, Dad. I, I know you were the one that that played it for us. Uh, <laughs> it, 
it it was it was basically like we're gonna find the place where the biblical ark came to rest, okay. and it it basically comes up to being like, well, we didn't like <laughs> it, it it, but it it doesn't just say that, but they they like they maybe find something. There's I think there's a similar thing for like trying to find the Garden of Eden and shit. Basically. Sure. The ancient alien peoples didn't in, did not create the concept of taking uh, an an old book very literally and trying to find the historical places in it, um, but it, it is interesting as a concept and kind of fun to do, especially when you find results like they like they did for. Um, well, they didn't. They really didn't find it in this one. They just talked about the guy that did it for ancient Troy. Yeah, it it, 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 it honestly trying to find. <laughs> trying to find evidence of ancient aliens almost makes more sense to me than trying to say find the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Um. It, it, it's it's always very strange to me taking taking biblical stuff so literally. Um. And and just like I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but that's very bizarre to me. Whereas like an alien, ancient aliens is like a thing that you can chase. Where like there there is some. You could you could maybe argue some like level of plausibility for the existence of like extraterrestrials if you mm -hmm. wanted to, but the Garden of Eden to me is just like in my mind it's just like a metaphor. You're it's, like looking for a concept. Like, yeah. it's uh, it's very strange. Yeah, that one like the Ark makes a little more sense, but then you also get into the factor of like they're basing it off of it being the biblical Ark, which in a lot of ways is a recontextualized ancient myth of of a great flood. So yeah. like the timeline may not line up to the biblical timeline, you know, and because it's probably yeah. something that we kind of stole when they made the Bible, but that that's going to hear that. They don't actually talk about the Ark in this documentary. That's just a, a thing that it made me think about because I had forgotten that existed. Um, but we basically go from, Oh, this guy found Troy to we're going to take the Bible incredibly like literally and decide that Sodom and Gomorrah happened because of an atomic explosion. Oh yeah. And, uh, <laughs> then it doesn't really like do anything with that. It just basically is like, yeah, it's cause some aliens blew up Sodom and Gomorrah with a fucking atom bomb. And now we go and talk about the Ark of the covenant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which I mean, I, sure. These are all like, here's the thing though, too. Like if you're a conspiracy UFO aliens head, these are like so many of these things are just oh yeah this is like the classic like the yeah. battery of baghdad yep like that that there there's so many things in here they're like ah yes a fucking classic i've heard about this for so long now yep and they get you get some footage of that like i'd heard the ark of the covenant stuff before yep um those the are the kinds of the covenant is effectively an electrical condenser yes that uh could be hooked up with a loudspeaker to let you speak with god aka some alien up in the sky and there it also like i guess like the, the materials and things available to moses at the time was were like it couldn't have possibly created this thing so yeah. like it was like through instructions from this god being or alien uh, that they were able to create it. So it did yeah. just stuff like and that. Some students in 1961 in a at a college oh, yeah. recreated it using the biblical text, and it created a thing that had to be destroyed because it had so much electrical current running through it. It's so dangerous. <laughs> I don't know how Which, true that is. Is that they real? Don't, they don't cite. They don't cite anything about it. <laughs> that so sounds made up. I, look, gonna have to do a quick Google on that one because I I don't know, but uh, I am curious about it. I I. Frankly, after finishing this documentary, I didn't feel like doing more research. So <laughs> I uh, I watched wrestling, but that's uh, neither here nor there. So uh, it then went on to talk about Elijah's ascension along with um, Ezekiel's angels and basically talking about how all these things in the Bible could be uh, described as aliens, like yeah. as as de depicting uh, spacecraft or other stuff like that. And, and honestly, this is a topic we've talked about before. I, I did an episode on, um, the, the Jews being let out of Egypt and, and like the, the flaming, um, column, column yeah, being yeah. a spacecraft like that. I think the books by Barry Downing is the guy that writes a lot about those theories. Um, not really represented in this, but it's, it's interesting. It's similar. Yeah, it, it is interesting. I, I, I also really love the interpretation of all those things as being like a, a some drug trips. Yeah, there there's a whole like that, uh, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing that I guess we could get into that someday. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's not really a conspiracy, mm, but it's like, yeah, it, it's in the realm of weird enough that I think we could cover it. Yeah, I, I've read a little bit about it. It's I mean, very I, fascinating. Look, I've, I've tried to crack like if whether or not we should or, and can do a stoned ape theory episode. <laughs> yeah. So um, I that'd be fun. You know, maybe we can. The only problem is like if you start doing stoned ape theory stuff. That's like one of Joe Rogan's favorites. <laughs> I was going to say, we're, and we're, I don't really want to. We're get veering like, into Joe Rogan tor- territory. We're going to attract the attention of Dr. Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Jesus Maybe Dr. Christ. Jordan Peterson could come on the show and explain to me why the existence of ancient aliens uh, uh, refutes the, the, the postmodern. I don't, I don't give a fuck. The only, look, if uh, he's going to come on the podcast, he has to A, not wear a suit, and B, he has to eat a fucking salad. <laughs> Those are the two requirements for Jordan Peterson to get on in this fact, fucking podcast. In fact, he has to eat a salad in front of us while yeah. we're recording. He has to eat like a salad that like maybe like a side of sliced apples. Like some like, some like like a kale, not like some fucking just iceberg. We're talking like something with actual like hearty, hearty shit. Hearty yeah. greens in it. Please, because, for the love of God. Look, his colon will thank us. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, this isn't a podcast about Jordan Peterson's eating habits. But if you want to know be. more about that. There's a Google. book written by he and his daughter that has <laughs> yeah. an awful cover. Um, uh, something I wanted to also mention yeah. that is kind of in like the first half of the episode, but they like kind of touch on it a little bit, which is this idea of um, th- like when they're kind of laying out why the ancient aliens theory is valid. Mm-hmm. They're basic. One of the things that they say is like picture these these cultures on Earth yeah. that have been disconnected from the rest oh, of the yep. world. And they are like they, the the documentary is essentially saying they're more primitive, and that they are disconnected. And then they meet people, like I, I think I think I wrote in my notes like colonizers type yeah. people. Uh, and and the meet these people who bring them like they, they they constantly have food, but they never need to hunt. They bring them like magical weapons and all this stuff, and and all and all these other things. This is, there's a very sort of like uh, um pedantic sort of thing going on about like like peoples of the world and that are like not like you know white explorer quote unquote like, untouched people untouched peoples yes um and yeah. so and and so they're like well you know if people were to you know have those kinds of encounters with an extraterrestrial civilization it, we would have no other words for them other than gods yeah um and that's cool but one of the things that I kind of think about with this is like, I imagine, I feel like the more likely scenario, if we want to theorize about the idea of like an alien civilization visiting earth. Yeah. When you are at the point that you are able to travel vast distance, like light years of space you're we've talked about kind of theories of of how it would work if alien civilizations existed before Mm -hmm. but like you're on another level where like i think there literally wouldn't even be language to it it would be so foreign to human concepts that we probably we honestly might not even recognize it you know what i'm saying like yeah and i think they they like they then take that that idea and be like, Oh, they're going to see them as gods. Right. And I like, I get, I get that. I get why you would think that because it, it like, I think what's so fucking interesting is how the baseline of ancient aliens trying to, to use religious structures to create something that is anti-religion or at least no more more than anti actually nullifies religion is really interesting mm-hmm. um just as like a conceptual exercise but like they're still dealing with such a a a framework of thinking that is based on how religions work and function so like the when you're looking at a at a group of people who have no concept of religion because they are Un, uncontacted by any outside presence they might have come up with some sort of religious like uh something on their own mm-hmm. but like we're still whenever we think about how people would react to that we only think about it, it using minds who know what religion is you know right 
And because of that, I think you get predetermined into these things where you would look at those people with awe and and worship them. When in reality, I don't know if that's actually the case. I, I don't think that's going to necessarily be true. I mean, it, it is there is definitely something about being human that like makes you predisposed to like create religion. Um, but yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I, I, I mean, I feel I like I'm that's sp- nature or nurture, you know? Yeah. I, I feel like I'm speaking above my pay grade here, but I, I see what you're saying. I mean, it's like, well, who's to say that if like an alien came to earth and met with like these older civilizations that we wouldn't just see them as another type of human. Yeah. You know, or, or like just see them with fear and, or yeah, and, like drive them out and not yeah, like a monster a religion. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting that we, we look at all these things as like, there's so much of this documentary that is predicated on people assuming things due to incomplete knowledge and drawing conclusions from not knowing like from the void that feels like like there's an agenda to it like it feels like that's that's one of the things with ancient aliens that's always kind of gotten me and and it really is a thing that happens with a lot of these kind of belief systems is is like so many of their baseline conclusions for the that like make up the foundational makeup of the belief system are seem to come from a place of having an agenda yeah and and i don't know i I think that there is bias in every human creation um whether you intend it or not but it it just like i we i've really gone off fucking the no i'm following you though i'm following but it it, uh it, it just makes it seem like it makes me wary of it in a lot of ways. Like I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the, the like wild claims that they make in, in a vacuum because it's so interesting as like an extent, the extents of what conclusions people can draw from the same facts. But it also is like, I don't believe any of this shit. It, yeah. it, it, it's so, I don't trust it because everything feels like it's coming to serve some agenda that is like can basically getting at this point, getting another season of an, of a history channel TV show. <laughs> yeah. But earlier, um, I mean, serving whatever purpose I that feel like Don Danny can have. back then you could maybe, I, I don't, this is, you could maybe guess that like, maybe they were trying to sell books. Right. But like, I, I do think that with a lot of this, even when it comes to something that is like coming from an earnest place, mm-hmm. uh, it still like gives that vibe. And, and maybe that's just because of we've only experienced our last 20 years of conspiracy stuff and UFO stuff on the internet and all that. Yeah. That could be our problem. But so I don't know what it would have been like back then to like stumble across a book that was saying like, Hey, have we considered that maybe ancient aliens interacted with, with human culture? It it, like somebody who already was like predisposed to like be like curious or, or thinking about like the concept of like alien civilizations, Mm -hmm. like, I, I don't, I don't know what that looks like. I'm, I maybe we're a little jaded just because like we're, we know this type of conspiracy yeah. and it is so pervasive. Um, and Alex Jones is at its core and all this stuff that like, yeah, maybe, maybe it, it rang more authentic back then. But I, I, I feel the same way where like, I will read that stuff and be like, you, you feel like, even if you are being authentic, you feel like you have an agenda. Yeah. And, and, and like, that's the thing. This documentary feels so clerical and so just like matter. Of, like it feels like a boring after school special documentary mm-hmm. where it's just like, here is a, you know, a journey through the ancient civilizations of, of the world. And because of that, it, it does slip in some pretty wild topics um, that, that like, and this could just be a product of its time, like where, you know, I'm I'm not used to this kind of documentary because I haven't watched one of them since we watched like fucking like film strips in biology class in seventh grade that like yeah. before we got DVDs and like Bill Nye. Um, but like it's so weird to see such wild claims put forth in such like a like simple, clean, like 
boring well, way. Nowadays, you would like dramatize it heavily. Yeah. You would you would have like you would make it feel really intense. This is definitely just laying it out like, well, here's what we think the facts are. Here's what we think you can draw from the facts. Uh, what do you think? That's like that's really all it does. Yeah. Um, I also agree in that I don't think any of it is correct about anything, but it is it is interesting to see how the uh the style has changed. Um, uh, the landscape. I mean. It's yeah, it is interesting to see something just be like, like you said, like clinical about its its uh, explanation of like a conspiratorial idea. Yeah. Really, I, I do think it's interesting that they do bring up uh, like towards the very end of the documentary, they bring up an Uzbekistan rock painting that I explicitly saw like debunked in when I did the episode on Von mm. Daniken. It and it makes me wonder what other of these things have been like kind of explained or I'm assuming um uh, you probably know which one I'm talking about it's the one that is like this doesn't look like a rock painting this looks like like a like a like a fucking 1950s like outsider artist yeah portrait thing um and it's it's uh it it is 100% been proven false it's like a flipped newspaper illustration or something like that I forget the exact rundown of it but it's it's like a pretty famous debunking of like a major ancient aliens like talking point there was another thing that gave me those vibes but i didn't look into it um where they're basically talking about the nazca lines oh yeah which like i'm sure that there's some really good genuine like historical like writing on those things because they're pretty fascinating just like even without alien theorizing going on um but one of the things that they brought up that i didn't i never actually heard in relation to the nazca lines is i think somewhere nearby there are a lot of like flattened out like areas and lines drawn in the ground mm-hmm. and they talk about how those are clearly <laughs> i was i was like i was about to say it very matter of factly and then yeah. it, like i thought about it before oh, those it came are out of clearly my Ameri- like uh, runways for alien yes, ships those are clearly like that's airstrips for like landing air like spacecraft i don't know if the 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 lines uh the nazca line ones specifically are that but the ones in like europe and asia uh in like siberia and other places like that that's my boy matest agrest <laughs> oh okay who, who talked about these like massive basically like ancient like landing strips for alien craft they're these like long flat rectangular yeah. stones where that could like withstand the force and uh and like temperature of an alien spacecraft either taking off or landing um and i and i think that stuff might like go further than just those couple in in that part of the world okay. and might be somewhere else but like that that I, he literally when his name popped up i was like oh yeah shit i've done an episode on that guy yeah um matest agrest Matest a fucking agrest. name yeah and uh yeah there there's like oh there's just like one thing that i hadn't ever heard before that i was very curious about and uh might have to do a quick goog on at some point but they were talking about how embalming wasn't a way to preserve mummies originally this it sounded was, like bullshit it was an attempt at copying an extra extraterrestrial method of like prolonging human beings yeah they basically, I, I, they basically say at this point, like, they're showing you a, a preserved mummy, and they're like, human beings were bad at embalming and didn't know how to do it, so aliens showed them how. Yeah. Um, but they didn't just say what, they showed us embalming. They said, like, embalming was us trying to do this alien thing that would keep people alive longer. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's no, no citation. Now, look, there, I don't expect citations in a documentary, but, like, a fucking a fucking like at the end maybe some more reading would be nice um yeah i i was just like well you, you can't just like say that right like you can't <laughs> this documentary I mean, only can. does that it's it's just like it it will be like 45 seconds of them saying something and then like um like 45 to mi- seconds to a minute of jazz music and then they say another thing yeah and then they'll say like two things in a row and then more jazz music and then they'll go to another place and more jazz music like it's so <laughs> well, it's such a fucking boring documentary for but says so much wild shit yeah it's so it man it's like 
it's it's one thing because like a lot of the times they sort of like gesture at like people who like are like have the bona fides to like to to be like oh yes i'm i'm a type of scientist and i think that this is a good theory like yeah. they, they'll gesture to those people for a lot of things but then occasionally you'd get a nugget that's just like yeah this was aliens attempting to do alien embalming and we weren't good at it and the aliens like gave us this like method to like preserve human life and and then that that will be like it's like that comes out of fucking nowhere and then it just goes back to these rocks are really are really like they're cut very symmetrically and ancient cultures couldn't do that. And it's like, no, go back to the fucking embalming yeah, it's, thing. It's, it's like, they're, they're like, usually it's posed as like, oh, well, this is our theory about, about ancient aliens. And then there's like two or three moments in it where they just tell you, this is a fact about aliens interacting with humans on planet earth. And it's like, hold the fuck yeah. up. Like when they were talking about, uh, they went to Teotihuacan and, um, we're talking about like, oh yeah, it's it's the Mayan pyramids, it's all this stuff, the geometry, whatever the fuck. Super cool. But then they're like, Quetzalcoatl was a white dude with a red beard that taught that <laughs> yeah. basically brought civilization to the Mayan cultures. There, and you're like, what the fuck? There is a really weird bit there where they keep bringing up a race of redheaded, bearded white men who basically helped civilize the uh, the uncivilized South Americans. Is, is ba and yeah. Like, am I wrong? Like, that's what they're no, fucking saying. And I'm saying. pretty sure this... I don't know what I they're don't, talking about. I think this might be... There's there's a topic that I've been trying to figure out how to okay. do for quite some time uh, about redheaded giants as an alien race. Oh, I think. Okay. I think that's what it is. It's... it's uh, uh, I mean, there, there's like a name for it. Is it the Kandarians or whatever? The the maybe because whenever I think of giants, is there? There's the very famous. I think it was an Iraqi giant supposedly that was killed, and he's called the. Yeah. They're called like the Kandarian giants. That uh, that is a thing. Uh, but I'm trying to I'm trying to find my. Well, it, it's just very strange to drop those things out of nowhere as if they're true. Or, or have any like historical like precedent and and well it's the fact that they drop them and then just move on immediately like they're just saying the most normal thing yeah uh it, it, the tuatha de danan tuatha um, de danan. tied with the red-haired giants of lovelock cave hmm. which okay. i have been trying to figure out how to do an episode about for a while i won't look um, into that one it's it's like the problem is it's like it's very dense so oh, i've sure. been trying one to figure it out um yeah, so never, uh, you know, whatever. A little tease for little, someday little in the future. for sometime between like a month from now and three years three, from now yeah, when I yeah. finally <laughs> actually get around to it instead of doing the fucking pancake bakers from space or some shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, th this, I, I wanted this documentary to be good. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. If you do not know anything about ancient aliens and also maybe take like, I, I don't know, like take some Ritalin or something <laughs> before you turn it on. Yeah. You might be able to like find this enjoyable. Or if you really just want to fucking chill out and vibe like at, uh, at 58 minutes, I, I just have a note that says I've decided this is now a vibe film. One to just chill to and not take seriously or many notes on. They're just taking me around the world, showing me big shit. Yeah. And that's really what it is. Um, and, and so I did, uh, I basically, and that, that whole concept lasted basically until um, they went back to South America again, like 10 minutes later after leaving for a while. Like it it's, if you don't pay too much attention, it's kind of a nice vibe because it's just like a guy with a nice voice speaking plainly about ancient shit well, cool. with like cool music yeah. and, and pictures. Um, but if you listen to it, and already know anything about ancient aliens it is such a frustrating watch yeah uh, another another thing i really want to talk about very briefly yeah, we, can, we don't have to get too deep into it but i i feel like maybe i've heard similar things uh before but towards the end a uh some sort of soviet scientist brings up a a skull of a bison with the bull <laughs> sorry it just reminded me of when when i pitched this documentary to kyle as a thing to do 
I looked at the IMDb <laughs> quotes page because I was curious. I like, you know, when I was looking it up on the IMDb, I was making sure it's the right thing. And the quotes page had page had one quote on it, and it says, "Man holding a bison skull." This bison was this bison was alive when it was killed. <laughs> that is the only quote on IMDb for this this documentary. <laughs> <laughs> and I was waiting for it the entire thing. It's like when it like I had a moment when the bison skull showed up. That was like when it's like when Bob Odenkirk appears in Little Women. Like it's it was a, <laughs> it was, so it was a joyous moment. Yeah. Well, this and I, maybe I was just mishearing what they were saying, mm-hmm. but they were basically like, yeah, this bison was shot in the head by a, like and you could only do it with like a clean bullet shot with like technology from like modern day but this skull is from four thousand years four thousand years ago. four thousand years ago um and now they got, they got like a they got them dead rights in the middle of the skull right too. in the middle like it's it's a clean fucking hole right in the center now i just they don't say anything explicitly here no but what i would like to point out is what is implied by this theory of the bison shot 4,000 years ago in the skull. Yeah. Which is the implication is that an alien was on planet Earth and shot a and bison. strapped. This and alien just like, had a fucking gad on him. Like, what the fuck is the... Uh, what? Well, and it, no, here's, here's even... Here's the more ridiculous thing. It presupposes that ancient aliens used it, used something like a modern ballistic pistol. Yeah. It... This thing was about the size of like I don't I don't know fucking guns. It looked like the size of like a pistol bullet, like a nine millimeter or some shit. It wasn't a big hole. No. It 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 really what this presupposes is aliens are carrying around like twenty tens light pistol weaponry aliens back four thousand years ago. Have that motherfucking thing on them at all times. Yeah, is what this is telling me. It I, I kind of wonder. If some of this stupid theorizing is like they have a vision in their head of like Star Trek style alien where it's like it's basically a human, but like it's basically they can't conceive of an alien that is like particularly different from a human, yeah. you know, like you, well, we can't think of anything better. Well, and here's here's where I don't know exactly when this came into being a part of the ancient aliens theory in that a lot of ancient aliens things have some element of these ancient aliens effectively bred with you with the the beings on earth to become what is now modern humanity therefore they are humanoid they are bipedal they are um the the we are in some essence descended from these ancient aliens so In that regard, it would make a lot of these things make a little more sense because so much of the like drawings and everything, once you get to a certain point in this documentary, are literally just like people with big round heads that don't have features on them because they say they're spacesuits. And that's like different from earlier on when it was showing like, you know, angels that they think are spaceships and and like people wearing these like big fucking like landing gear stilts and shit. Like yeah. a bunch of weird interpretations that they just throw all in the bin of alien. Um, so I don't know if at this point I've not read pure, I've not read the text of chariot of the gods. I have only consumed ancient alien theory as a person in the 2020s reading about it on the internet. And in that essence, that theory has already been put into the, into it. Like, yeah. So I don't know if that was a part of it at this point and they were just saving it for the sequel. Um, you know, you have to get them in on like, back these people couldn't do this so therefore here's where you know aliens fucked ancient humans and created modern humanoids like i don't know yeah i I, yeah the the problem with the ancient aliens theory is that it is just so the, the pickings for evidence are so fucking slim and the things that are quote unquote evidence are like could, but you could really be rationalized in a much uh, simpler way. It's the most, uh, why are you saying zebra when it's a horse kind of thing? Yeah. It's it's like ancient cultures couldn't have done this, therefore aliens had to do it. No, they just, they figured it out. Like, they figured out how to do these things. And what, oh, they saw something in the sky. Yeah, shooting stars exist. Like, it it's, 
I, I just you you have good explanations for these things, even if like we don't have the words at the time of witnessing them to like record it in such a way that we like make it perfectly understand that like the the battle in the sky in the 15th century was a fucking sun dog yeah. or whatever those things are called you know like mm -hmm. you know it's it's yeah there's there's perfectly rational explanations for just about everything that the ancient aliens people like like to talk about yeah i don't know but I, still, I, I would go to the Ancient Aliens Museum if yes. it still exists. Oh my uh, god, yes. I would take a trip to trip take a trip to Europe. Absolutely. I honestly forget if that got shut down or not. There I, I did take a couple virtual rides on YouTube, um, which are available <laughs> if you want to look that up. Uh Von Daniken Land, whatever the fuck they called it. Um I did an episode about that like two years ago. It's and it's wild. still it's still like one of my favorite things that I've covered because someone made he made a fucking theme park. He has a, like an ancient aliens theme park. Oh, it, it's so good. It's so ugh. And he wanted the thing is he wanted to make a bigger one. And he, he this was his like <laughs> this this is what he this ended is up the with. Concession. Ugh. That's man. yeah. That's uh Yeah, I don't know. We we got we got some big fucking names to really continue to to tango with. Uh, Von Daniken's up there, but you know, Zachary Sitchin is the other big one, I think. I have a Sitchin book um, right over there that I, I haven't read yet. I, I, have, I was thinking about doing that for another bonus show. I've I've got Chariots of the Gods. I, I think I gotta read that shit at some oh, point. Oh, you own chariots? I okay. own chariots. Like it, it's um but it's like if all of it's gonna be this, I don't know how much I want. Like I was I really excited at the concept of having Chariots of the Gods on hand. After watching this, don't know if I feel as excited. It's the, there's no way the book can just be a list of ancient hey, structures. Nile, hold Von Daniken's beer. <laughs> like, because here's the thing. Here, here's what's fucked up. If you remember in the opening credits of this film, it says that it is based on not not just chariots of the gods, but also I forget what it's called, like remainders of Earth or something like that. Oh, like the yeah, second, yeah. This is based on two fucking Von yeah. Daniken books. Nile. It's 1970. The only fucking thing they have is three channels on their television and hoop and stick. It, it's it, it like, <sighs> of course he can put out a book. That's a list of these things. <laughs> he can put out two of them. I I mean, I'll read it. Uh, I'll let people know. Yeah. Like it's a short book. So yeah. I can probably bang it out in a day at some point. I just like, now I'm just like, fuck, am I just, yeah. gonna, are they just going to list off like, these artifacts and then ask some questions about them that don't make sense. Probably. Yeah, that's so that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. What, what do we have anything else about this fucking documentary, like specifics about it or, or do we want to talk, finish up speaking broadly? What do you think? I, I don't, I would just look through my list. I don't think I have any other notes that are really important to talk about. Like they, 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 they cover, if you name like an ancient structure, they probably talk about how those yeah. people didn't build it and aliens did. Like it, it, it is pretty exhaustive. Um, so, you know, pick your favorite, but I, I think we're ready to talk about this largely. So I, one thing I would, I do want to point out, actually, sorry, this is, this is going to be a question for listeners and maybe people know what I'm talking about. Okay. And I thought it was at, at the start of the documentary, they bring up a an observatory, a telescope, the Mount Palomar Observatory Telescope, um, as like the, this is like this is like the jumping off point for like observing the heavens and like and like finding stars and all this other stuff, um, in the search for alien life. Now I don't know if it's the same telescope or observatory, but I remember. At one point, my uncle, who lives out in California, was telling me about an observatory that had a sort of alien culty thing built up around it. Oh, no. Okay. And um, I don't remember what it was. I have been un unable to find this again. Okay. So I'm bringing this up to say, listeners, it gets weird podcast at gmail.com. If you know what I'm talking about, email me what this was because i 
and, and I don't think my uncle remembers because I'm pretty sure I brought it up to him and he's like, I don't know what I was talking about with you. But he told me about this like telescope that like I think had like a UFO cult that like lived in the observatory or something like that. Something weird. Um, I might be getting some details mixed up around here. So listeners, if 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 you know what I'm talking about, let us know, please. But <laughs> what's so fucked up is as you started that story, my brain auto completed before you told me what you're talking about with oh Kyle's going to be talking about the fact that I think this might be the observatory that factors into uh the the third act plot of uh of the alternate anchorman movie wake up Ron Burgundy where eco terrorists take the the news team hostage and hold them I believe in an observatory uh that I think might be this one um now that I would have I haven't watched this in quite some time but I believe they they it starts in a bank and ends in an observatory and I think that it being in San Diego area that that might be what we're talking about here so that's the fact that that's what my brain was like, oh, Kyle's going to be talking about this, it's, I think says a lot about me as a person. Um, I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. I don't think many people I, will. I don't know, know if a lot of people got the extra disc of uh, of Anchorman that featured the entirely separate plot featuring almost none of the same scenes that are like version of Anchorman that had an entirely different movie. Like... It exists. It's called Wake Up Ron Burgundy. Go what? look it up. Uh, it's fucking weird that this thing exists. But uh, yeah, I, I'll have to double check uh, myself to see if that's real. It's so crazy how San Diego means of whale's vagina. <laughs> that's never, you know, I never uh, got over that. That's fucking wild. Man, Ron Burgundy uh, would probably be <laughs> featured well on this soundtrack. <laughs> so, Little Yaz flute. Man, yeah. good, this, good on uh, him. Yeah, I I just uh yeah, this documentary, man. What what I feel like we've pretty much said most of it. Yeah. It's it's not good. Who okay. Um so let, let, let's let's hit our normal questions. Sure. Who is this documentary yeah. for? Okay, I can answer that though. I've been thinking about who this is for. This is for you and your friends who have legally partaken of marijuana as you're hanging out playing a game, doing something else with this in the background. You're going to have a good time with this going on in the background after you've smoked a little bit of the green with your pals. Um, and maybe you're like playing like fucking a game. Donkey Kong 64. You're, you're playing Donkey Kong 64. That wasn't going to be my poll, yeah. but that's a good poll nonetheless. So, man, that my, mine was was going to be somewhat similar because that that honestly feels like the vibe – the vibe of this documentary is so like you have to you have to slow yourself down to be at its pacing. So like there are probably other ways to do this. Um, Many different drugs you can try watching this <laughs> under the influence of. Yeah, uh, but I think I, I'm just going to go with like this is something that, that you would catch like this is for people who are flipping through the channels and do not want to watch any more goddamn infomercials and end up on like a public access that's playing a shitty rip of this documentary. And they're like, sure. Ah, good enough. Like, yeah, it's, it, it's not for people who are super into ancient aliens things. Cause I think it's pr like, there's so many more modern, better like versions of what this documentary is trying to be. This is such a weird artifact of like 1970, the be not even the beginnings of ancient aliens, but like the kind of first, I th I think the first like time it started to gain traction because I'm pretty sure this would be a around the time that chariots, of the gods is like selling really well. And that is uh, as referenced earlier in this episode, when Jack Kirby was interested in these ideals and came up with Marvel's the Eternals, um, which is now streaming on, on Disney plus for those that yeah. haven't seen it. I haven't watched it. Still thinking about maybe doing it for the podcast. Cause <laughs> it's, it's literally just ancient aliens, the Marvel Marvel movie. And that's fucking weird. But yeah, I, uh, it, it it's, it's such a weird thing. This, like mm -hmm. it was interesting to, to, it's interesting to have watched this. It's not interesting to watch. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's absolutely, that's a good, that's a good summary. That's a good summary. Yeah, I I don't know what to tell you, folks. Like, 
even if you're a fan of this stuff, you're probably going to be bored. It, it's the same. And the thing is, it's the same old. It's the it's the the hits, but there's nothing interesting added about the hits of the yeah. the ancient alien stuff. It is, it is. Hey, it's 1970. What the hell is this all about? Alien, ancient aliens. I'll check that out. That's that's what this is. It's nothing. The, this documentary is made irrelevant by there being a Wikipedia article now. Yeah. If you find, <laughs> if you find footage, if you're like a weird person, I, I guess not that weird, but like I did find the footage itself genuinely interesting. Mm-hmm. It just the my interest in it had absolutely nothing to do with the ancient alien side of things. So if you think footage of like places like around the world and people around the world in 1970 is cool, then you you might find something kind of interesting here. But otherwise, wow, what yeah. a waste of time. <laughs> All right. I think that basically wraps, wraps yeah. us up for this week. Thank you for journeying, for journeying with us to the 1970s uh, and, and sitting down and watching a VHS rip of a documentary from uh, – from 1970 you know what this is also for people who want to turn the podcast on with this in the background oh yeah you could easily do that you very well could turn on the podcast you're prepping dinner and then you just have this on in the background that's probably another good way to and honestly whenever this podcast is done you can probably just turn the documentary off because like yeah you you got most of it it. you don't need to finish like you can just leave it on on mute if you want to but you really don't need to yeah um so yeah, this is our first uh, first soundtrack episode, I guess. Uh, so thank you all for listening. Um, let's go ahead and take care of some business. Sure. If you want to follow us, you can find us on on social media. You can find us on Twitter at IGW Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook.com slash It Gets Weird Podcast. And we're on all your favorite podcatchers from Stitcher to Google Play to Apple Podcasts to Spotify, um, unlike Neil Young. Uh, <laughs> if you want... <laughs> to find us on a podcatcher look up it gets weird and we're probably there email us it gets weird podcast at gmail.com if you know what i was talking about earlier that my uncle forgot what he was talking about please let me know yeah it will provide valuable nutrients to us and i would just really love to know what that is because i remember hearing that story and being like i need to talk about this on the show um and then of course patreon.com slash it gets weird look we have a two dollar tier and a five dollar tier and eight Ain't it grand? Um, <laughs> it uh, is, you know? It's just, it it, it's just great. And so at the $2 tier, you get a bonus episode every other week. It's It Gets Weird TV. That's what we're doing right now. Um, we're watching Gravity Falls at the moment. Uh, at the $5 tier, you get It Gets Weird TV plus other bonus shows on the off weeks. So you're getting bonus content every single week at the $5 tier. Whether or not you donate at the $2 tier or the $5 tier, you get access to our secret Discord chat that we're all hanging out in. You get access to the main episodes of It Gets Weird on your own personal feed two days early on Friday instead of Sunday. Um, So please, donate if you can. And we do have a $1 tier that's just kind of like a tip, like, hey, I like what you do. You don't get anything out of the $1 tier, but if you want to just kick us a buck every month, that's cool. Uh, If you can't donate, please tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell your congressmen, all about it gets weird get a fucking congressman to listen to it gets weird some one of you out there has to have a connection i want to have political sway through this podcast Please. in the house of congress it would be so we get one fan in congress we can start influencing decisions and that my friends is how we're going to get to alien disclosure that's the end goal of all podcasting yes. so Uh, I think that wraps us up for the week. Thank you all for listening. This has been It Gets Weird, and I've been Niall. And I'm Kyle signing out. Peace.